Welcome back to the Dirt Show. Okay, you persuaded me. You were right. I finally watched 2000 Mules. Uh, my wife, my son, and I sat there for whatever it was, two hours, watched every minute of it, just as we watched the congressional hearings some days before. It shouldn't surprise you that I think there's an enormous, enormous similarity between 2,000 mules and the congressional hearings. You may say they're exactly the opposite. Of course, they're exactly the opposite. The congressional hearings are absolutely certain that uh, the Republicans did everything wrong. Trump should be in prison. Uh, there was no plausible claim of anything wrong with any of the uh, elections. That was one perspective. 2,000 mules uh, has exactly the opposite perspective. The election was fraudulent. Uh, these mules carried boxes of ballots from place to place. And there is no doubt that uh, Trump actually won the election. The tragedy of current America is that's the way we get our information from two extremist sources, neither of which is prepared to acknowledge arguments on the other side. 2,000 Mules is very interesting. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza, I know him. Uh, I helped him a little bit get his pardon from President Trump. I like him. Um, I thought the movie was good. Um, I agree that people actually should watch it, should watch it right after hearing the congressional hearings. I also think that People should watch the congressional hearings. I, I disagree with Fox's decision not to run them on its main channel uh, the first night. I agree much more with Newsmax. Run it and have commentators like me uh, who can be fairly objective and criticize what criticism is necessary and support what support is uh, warranted. Uh, but that's not the America we live in today. There are no Walter Cronkites in America today. Walter Cronkite could not get a job. Some of you might not even remember who Walter Cronkite was. Walter Cronkite was the most credible uh, news source uh, on television. If Walter Cronkite said something, it was true. It was like your beloved grandfather. Uh, I got to know Walter Cronkite in the end of his life. He lived on Martha's Vineyard in Edgar Town. I was on his boat. Um, I liked him. He liked me. Um, we met mostly on, on social occasions, but we had opportunities to talk from time to time, about politics. And it turned out he was different in person than he was on the air. In person, he was pretty left-wing and, and pretty opinionated, but you would never know that. Just like if you came to my class in criminal law for 50 years at Harvard, you would never know what my politics was because that wasn't my job. My job was not to teach you what to think. It was to teach you how to think. That's why I've had so many students from the right and the left and the center tell me how much they like my, my teaching. Um, Walter Cronkite's job was not to tell you what to believe. It was to present the evidence on all sides and lead you to make your own conclusions. Toward the end of his career, he finally had it on the Vietnam War and when he expressed his opinion on the Vietnam War, it changed the opinion of Americans because we trusted him. We believed him. We don't trust the House uh, committee. And we don't necessarily trust Dinesh D'Souza. Um, we trust them both to present part of the story, but not to present the whole story. You know, it used to be you could go to a media and, and, and read both sides. You could go to the New York Times. You could go to CBS News or CNN and, and, and expect to hear all sides of an issue presented. And then you could leave and, and, and argue. When my son, Elon, who's my producer here, helped make the movie, produced it, uh, Reversal of Fortune, about the Von Bulow case, the goal was to have everybody leave that movie house watching the film Reversal of Fortune, arguing about whether Klaus von Bülow did it or didn't do it. The movie did not present a solution. It presented evidence on all sides and left it to the viewer to make a decision about whether he or she believed 
that Von Bülow was guilty, innocent, or somewhere in between. I wish there were a 2,000 mules or a congressional hearing which did that. Um, let me tell you what I think of, of 2,000 mules. I've already told you what I think of congressional hearings. They should be ignored. Um, they should be given no effect. Um, even the things they showed you and you saw with your own eyes, you should distrust. Uh, if you watch the congressional hearings, you would think that President Trump, who, whose January 6th speech I thoroughly disapprove of, you would think he, he told the people to go to the Capitol, break in and, and be, be violent. You wouldn't know that he said, I want you to go to the Capitol peacefully and patriotically and have your voices heard. A paradigmatic invocation of the First Amendment. Nothing could be more protected speech than I want you to go to the Capitol peacefully and patriotically and want your voices to be heard. If you don't agree with that, then show the whole thing and let people decide for themselves. But don't leave it out. You can't do that. If you leave it out, then we don't trust anything you give us, anything you tell us. And I think there were things left out of 2,000 mules uh, as well. So let me go over uh, 2,000 mules and what I think of it. Utterly unpersuasive on the issue that Trump won the election and that uh, Biden lost the election. Utterly unpersuasive because in the end, it doesn't really deal with the machines, uh, which do most of the county in which there are real questions. I'm involved in a lawsuit now involving Dominion. So there are real questions about the machines, but it deals almost exclusively with paper ballots, of which there is some concern. We'll talk about that in a minute. What it doesn't do persuasively is tell us how they know that the paper ballots that were questionable were really intended for uh, Trump and were given to Biden. We know that there's questions but we don't know what impact it had on the election. We also don't really have the numbers. What we have is hypotheticals. It could conceivably have, it might have. If everything followed a certain pattern, then maybe this result in Pennsylvania, this result in, in Michigan, this result in Georgia, this result in Arizona might have been different, but it's a might have, might have, might have, could have, uh, should have uh, in the mind of many but utterly unpersuasive, that it actually had an impact on the election. That doesn't mean it's not a good film. It did confirm my view, and I don't want to speak for my son or for, for my wife, but it did confirm my view that the massive use of um, write-in ballots raises a real question about election security. Uh, it really presented very persuasive proof that we just don't know what happens to uh, these ballots. We, we don't have the kind of security that we have when somebody goes to a poll. There are poll watchers, there are machines, there are booths. You directly put your ballot into a box if it's voting that way or you press a button. Um, but it's much harder for there to be people who have a determination to either throw away certain votes or increase the number of votes on the other side. So I came away thinking the potential for abuse was too high to warrant the continuing use and expanded use of paper ballots. Look, it's a trade-off. Uh, with paper ballots, probably more people vote. People who are lazy and don't want to go to the polls or whose bosses don't give them time off, which they're obligated to do under the law. Uh, if it's a very rainy day, if they have a problem with their children at home, yeah, it deprives some people of the, of the right to, to vote, or at least of the ability to vote. But by the way, I think paper ballots and mail-in ballots should continue for old people, infirm people, people who have um, real reasons, um, people during covid it, that's fine. But what I'm concerned about is changing our culture of voting from the voting booth. I used to love, I still love to go down to the voting booth. I used to bring my kids. We would go, we would say hello to all the people uh, with signs on both sides. Uh, yeah, they're not allowed to give you water or cookies. Okay, that, that seems okay as long as it's done 
uh, neutrally, but you'd see your friends, you'd see your neighbors, and then you'd vote and you'd get a little badge saying, I voted. It was something very, very nice about that. I'd like to see that tradition maintained uh, with exceptions for people who would otherwise not be able to vote or for whom voting would be extremely inconvenient. Uh, but it should be the exception and not the rule. I don't think vote by mail should become the rule in America. And I have to tell you, I've had that view for a while, but it was really confirmed for me by 2000 Mules. It absolutely persuaded me that the potential for abuse uh, was just far too great to warrant the um, uh, convenience that's given to uh, some people. Look, I think we ought to experiment and see what happens if we uh, eliminate and I'm, I'm involved actually now in a constitutional challenge in Arizona because the Arizona Constitution actually seems to require uh, in, in-person voting. Um, um, but uh, and I, so there, there, it's different in Arizona because there is a, a state constitutional requirement. I, I gave advice on, on that, which I obviously want to disclose. Uh, but even before I became involved in that case, I had some questions uh, about that, and, and 2,000 Mules really confirmed a lot of my suspicions. You know, the chain of custody issue. You know, in a criminal case, if you present a piece of evidence, a document, you have to demonstrate where the document originated, to whom it passed, or if you present physical evidence, blood evidence. In the O.J. Simpson case, for example, we were able to establish that uh, Officer Van Adder took blood samples that should not have been removed from the lab, took them home, and we believe, and we argued, poured them on the sock of O.J. Simpson uh, to create a piece of evidence that uh, was damning and incriminating. It had the blood both of O.J. Simpson and his victims. What could be better evidence than that? But we persuaded the jury, and I think honestly so, that that evidence didn't pass the chain of custody, and you should have some doubts, reasonable doubts about it. Well, if chain of custody is important in criminal and civil cases, it is certainly very important in elections. And I just, from what I saw in 2000 Mules, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, um, and um, I'd love to hear the other side of this. I've read a lot of reviews, and I've read criticism, legitimate criticisms, but I never read criticisms of this. What was wrong with the way it showed a lack of chain of custody and unknown people three o'clock in the morning coming and dumping ballots uh, from uh, nonprofit organizations that favored one party over the other into drop boxes. This is just, it was disturbing. And uh, I didn't agree with the conclusion that it proved that the past election was stolen, but I did agree with my own pre-existing conclusion that uh, that the mail-in ballots raise questions. I'd love to see some scientific evidence of that. I'd love to hear, you know, hearings. You're not going to have any hearings, you know, when the Republicans win in, in, in November, which they probably will. They're going to have equally one-sided uh, hearings. Now that Democrats have established a precedent, you don't even have to put any people of the other party on the committee. Uh, if you put them on the committee, you hand pick them and make sure they're your type people on the committee, uh, like like um, the two who were picked by Speaker Pelosi to, quote, be Republicans uh, on, on the committee, two people who voted to impeach President uh, Trump. So, you know, it tells us so much about American society that the way we have to decide is by seeing two diametrically opposed points of view presented in a one-sided fashion without any opportunity to cross-examine, challenge the evidence on each side. And then we have to pick and choose. And, you know, most of us don't have the capacity to figure out what was wrong with the congressional hearings exactly. We know generally what's wrong. You don't present one side. As I've said before, you don't put the Celtics on the court and don't allow the Warriors on uh, or vice versa. We, we know there was structurally something wrong. But unless you know the facts very well, you might not know that they doctored the tape of the president's speech or that you failed to present other evidence which pushed the opposite way. The same thing is true for the people who've watched 
2,000 mules, most of them don't have the experience or education or knowledge to be able to look at the film and say, oh my God, no, you didn't prove that. You may have proved this, but you didn't prove that. Um, I have to tell you, I read the reviews actually before I saw the film. So I was aware of the criticism and I read reviews on both sides of Washington Post review, which was very, very, very critical and other reviews, which were somewhat less critical in some reviews that were um, somewhat favorable. Most of the reviews that I saw online were very critical. Now, I don't, I'm not here to tell you I believe those reviews, but they led me to be able to look at what was on the television screen and say, oh, no, no, no. The reviewer pointed out that this woman who shows up three or four times and the guy with the dog and, you know, maybe it's only a couple of ballots. And why did they show this and not that? And the case of the people who were caught uh, based on this um, uh, ability to trace uh, cell phones had nothing to do with that case, actually. I mean, a lot of very important revelations that you wouldn't know if you just saw the movie, but if you read the reviews, you would know them now. Maybe the reviews were wrong. And so, you know, it's so typical of our of our society today that you cannot get the truth from one source. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe the truthing process involves multiple, multiple sources but, um, you know, it's very hard, very hard today to determine, determine what the truth is, because what you're hearing is presented in various, various um, uh, polemical forms with no opportunity to really respond. So I'm going to skip right to one letter, which goes to that issue. Here's a letter from DWD1329, five hours ago. Media news should be regulated. Eliminate political opinions. Eliminate opinion, period. News media even use the weather as political motive. And, and so what does DWD want? The government? Biden to regulate the media? Biden to appoint the chief censor? When I was doing human rights work in the Soviet Union, there was an organization called Glovelet. Glovelet. They were the official censorship organization of the Soviet Union. Nothing could come out unless it had a stamp approved by Glovelet. Is that what you want? Media news should be regulated? Who should it be regulated by? Biden? No, no, you don't want it to be regulated by Biden. Would you like to be regulated by Trump, even though he's not the president? Who would you have regulated? Walter Cronkite's dead. He's not going to be able to write it. So it's ridiculous. Uh, the only thing worse than false news and bad news and dangerous news is regulated news. So let me tell you right off the bat, no way on that one. It's not going to happen. I will fight it. I will cite Voltaire. I may disagree with what you say, but I will fight to the death for your right to say it. So, you know, that's... that's uh, what, what uh, we're hearing today. I, I have an, another letter that, that's much like that. It's true Dershowitz should keep his opinioning to himself instead of casting doubt. In other words, 2,000 mules, we, we announced that the show would be, is 2,000 mules bull. So we've gotten about 100 letters commenting on my title, is it bull? They forgot about it as a question mark. I didn't say it is bull. I asked the question, is it bull? And, and this responder, Preacher's Girl 131, it is true, 2,000 bulls, Dershowitz should keep his opinioning to himself instead of casting doubt. My job is to cast doubt. I will always cast doubt. Why should I keep my opinions to myself? I'm not asking you to keep your opinions to yourself. In America, we have the right to express our opinions and to cast doubt. Doubt is the right approach to the news today. Doubt is the right approach to 2,000 mules. Doubt is the right approach to the congressional hearings and investigations done by Congress. Doubt is the right approach to look at the Justice Department, whether it's under the control of Democrats or Republicans. Doubt, doubt is what we want. The Declaration of Independence is based on doubt. 
the constitutional right of free speech is based on doubt. That should be our symbol of our flag. Doubt. Doubt everything. Question authority. Question everything. Well, you're not going to shut me up. And you're not going to tell me to keep my opinions to myself. I'm going to express doubt. That's my job. That's your job. And when you send me letters, please send me letters that express your doubt. Okay, so I'll divide the letters today into two. The ones that came in before this show, just based on the title, uh, just a couple, and then we'll go to um, letters based on yesterday's show. Uh, so this is from uh, Snoopus. Uh, the evidence presented in 2000 Mules is very strong. It is definitely a movie every voter should see. I agree 100%. I think the evidence is strong. I think the evidence in the um, January 6th commission is strong. I think everybody should see the commission, the committee report, the committee uh, hearings. Everybody should see 2000 Mules and everybody should decide for themselves. The evidence is strong but it's weakened by not presenting the other side. For example, in 2000 Mules, you had a panel. I know the people on, on the panel, they're smart people, but you didn't have somebody like me on the panel, a doubter. Um, yeah, we had some who started out as, as doubters, but the ones who made the final cut uh, and the final cut of the film was, was doubt-free. The film would have been much stronger had it included not only doubters like me who are in the center, but uh, people who have almost no doubt that the election was completely fair and secure and that there was no fraud at all. That's what you get on CNN. And you got the exact opposite in 2000 Mules. And it, it weakened the film uh, as the result of, of that uh, one-sidedness. So, again, comparison between uh, the January 6th kangaroo committee and 2000 mules write me why you think that analogy is wrong write to me why you think that i'm wrong to compare the congressional hearing and not and and, and the 2000 mules i think they are two sides of the same coin good question here good question okay <clears throat> does the Suze's film mention or even hint at uh a one instance uh of, of voter fraud committed on behalf of the 2020 Republican candidate. Well, it does. It, it, it does mention that uh, some of the cases that have been brought on fraud um, were brought against Republicans. It does do that. Um, but it does say, and it, it may be right, it does say that when you track what they tracked to the nonprofits, most of the nonprofits were uh, left-leaning nonprofits. But there's no doubt in my mind, and the reason that I'm willing to be involved in a case challenging um, um, mail-in in ballots as a, as a regular way of voting is that the uh, fraud equally could go both ways. And I'm not interested as an academic and as a civil rights, civil liberties, civil libertarian, who wins the election. That's not my issue. That's up to the American public. What I care about is a fair election, and I want a fair election without regard to who benefits or who loses. So when we get to the other one, why didn't the media cover um, the um, uh, effort to get into the home of Justice Kavanaugh and perhaps uh, assassinate him? Uh, here's my favorite, my favorite response. Ask your fellow Jews. This is from Shiloh 123. Ask your fellow Jews. Do I have fellow Jews? I mean, some of the people in the world I hate the most are Jews. Some of the people I love the most are Jews, probably because I know a lot of Jews, but there, there are no fellow Jews. When you mention fellow Jews, you're already into a conspiracy theory. Are Hasidic Jews fellow Jews? Are anti-Zionist Jews who want to see the end of Israel fellow Jews? Um, you know, being circumcised or being born to Jewish parents it doesn't make you a fellow. Okay, so let's start out with that. Ask your fellow Jews. They control most of the mainstream and social media. Rob Iger, ABC Disney. I have no idea whether he's Jewish or not. I couldn't care less. Brian Roberts. I have no idea who he is. Uh, Sherry Redstone. Uh, uh, Arthur Sulzberger. I don't think the Sulzbergers have been Jews for 100 years. I mean, the uh, 
originator of the New York Times was a Jew from Tennessee, but uh, they they have stopped being Jews. Um, uh, many of them, most of the Sulzbergers, for for many many generations. Okay, Michael Bloomberg, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Sergey Brin, and Larry uh, Page. Let me tell you what is so wrong with this. All of these people made it on their own talent. Some of them were born very, very poor. Sergey Brin, for example, was a, a Soviet dissident. He came over from Russia with nothing. And he invented Google. So, Shilo, you don't like Jews having influence? Make a better mousetrap. Go to school. Become educated. Invent something. Do something. Don't just spout your bigoted anti-Semitism. Jews deserve what they got. They got it like others, like African-Americans who've made it to the top, like Greek-Americans, like Italian-Americans who've made it to the top through the dint of their hard work. Nobody gave Sergey Brin anything. Nobody gave Michael Bloomberg anything. Nobody gave any of these people anything. So even if you're right, which you're not, of course, the Jews control the media, the Washington Post is very anti-Israel. The New York Times is very anti-Israel. Uh, CNN has been anti-Israel. Um, so, so you're wrong about that. But even if you were right, under our free market society, under our liber libertarian approach, where the government doesn't select like Putin selects who the oligarchs are, in America, it's a meritocracy. The people you named rose through the meritocracy. If you don't like it, compete. Compete in the marketplace of ideas. There is nothing more American than open market competition. Build a better mousetrap. Sergey Brin, build a damn good mousetrap. Do I agree with everything that appears on it? No, but don't attack him as a Jew. He built the better mousetrap, Google, because he's a human being who uses intelligence, unlike you, who sits and spouts bigoted, un-American anti-Semitism. What could be more un-American than blaming people for their success because their grandparents or great-grandparents happen to be Jewish? It's Hitler on wheels. Look in the mirror, Shilo, and understand what a miserable bigot you are, how close you are to the Nazis of Germany. Shame on you and shame on anyone else who shares those anti-Semitic and bigoted values. Work harder, do better. Maybe someday you'll achieve the success that these folks achieved on their own merits. Okay. Great show, one person writes to me. Learned a lot of history as usual. So many things I didn't know about the Supreme Court. Keep it up, Alan. I look forward to your shows each week. At least once in a while I have to read a letter that, that is somewhat positive. Here's an interesting one. This was about the assassination uh, efforts by that kid from California. Why isn't the attempted assassination of President Trump infecting him with the China virus? Front page news. Because it didn't happen. Is that a good reason for not putting it on the front page? Even Donald Trump and nobody I know in his family has thought that he was a victim of an attempted assassination. What an idiot you are. What a Jerk. My mother would have a word for you. Schmuck. Um, but I'm not going to use that word on my, my website. It's demeaning. But my mother would have, even though she never cursed. But she liked that word. Uh, it fits you to a T. Um, next letter. Before I even see the video, let me guess that Dirsch will find some way to justify and excuse it. I didn't. I didn't. I mean, I looked at it. I watched it carefully. I came to my own conclusions about it. Uh, some, some are, some are maybe right, some may be wrong. Here's an interesting one. How was Justice Kavanaugh's potential assassin stopped? Now he has the answer. This is going to be the answer to my desire to have reasonable gun control. Here's his answer. The question, how was Justice Kavanaugh's potential assassin stopped? By good guys carrying guns. You know, there's a name for the good guys who are carrying guns. They're called police officers. I favor police officers having guns. I favor police officers having two types of guns, 
uh, lethal guns to use in case of a shootout or in case it's necessary, and non-lethal weapons. Sometimes they can get confused, as happened um, in, in the case in, in Minnesota, where uh, a, a police officer is unjustly serving an unjust sentence for a non-crime. Um, but uh, for the most part, police officers should have guns. I never agreed with the British approach uh, where they disarm their police. Now they've armed their police. So count me in. I don't want guns to be taken away from police. I don't want to defund the police. I don't want to disarm the police. But your argument makes no sense at all. Uh, the, the Kavanaugh murder was not prevented by some vigilante uh, out there with a gun where he couldn't pass uh, an appropriate background check. That's what I'm concerned about. Okay, um, let's end, <laughs> let's end on, 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 a, on, a, on a couple of stupid notes. America actually needs an insurrection. It would be justified, right? Yeah, okay, so you want to lead an insurrection. No, uh, America's a great country and is governed by the rule of law. And then finally, why aren't the lists of visitors to Epstein's Island not front page news? I wish they were. I wish every aspect of Epstein's Island, which I visited once with my wife and my daughter, way before any young people were ever on the island, way before anybody knew anybody had done anything. I wish everybody who went there, I wish there were videotapes. I have waived my right to privacy. If you have a video of me in relation to Jeffrey Epstein, show it. I want to see it. I want it on the front page. I would like the whole story of my false accusation to be on the front page because I did nothing wrong. See you next week.